sir, yes sir, yes sir. I had to make sure I caught it at 7 p.m. If you see me, I look exhausted because I have been moving. If you guys see my room, if you guys can see, this, the background is not the same because I'm not in the same apartment no more. You know what I'm saying? Your boy gotta level up and do what he gotta do. You know what I'm saying? So, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna, I, I didn't want to make me move and be an excuse. I wanted to sort of push me to get to what I got and get done and also be here and highlight another amazing individual for you. And honestly, perseverance and endurance is probably the motive, right? The motto and the slogan of today's uh, interview because of the individual that I have coming on today, right? This is an individual that I feel like, honestly speaking, he can, he, he can really surpass any type of limit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad I was able to get him on. I go to the gym with him almost every single day. This is my boy, my homeboy, and I really wanted to make sure that this is an individual that was highlighted. And also because, to be quite frank, you don't see too many people that look like me in Vermont, right? You don't see too many people of color in Vermont. And honestly speaking, when you do see someone of color in Vermont, I want you guys to pay close, close attention because they're probably doing something amazing. So we're just gonna wait for our amazing, amazing guests to come on through. I'll make sure. See if he's coming on. If you see my face, like, uh, you know, I've told you, I've been, I've been working, like, I've been working since one o'clock in the morning. It is now 7 p.m. East Coast time. I am not stopping to. I got to go to Walmart after this. I got to go to Target too. I got to go back and clean the old apartment. I got to do a lot of stuff. I am exhausted, but I'm still staying on two feet. Why? Because I persevere. Mama ain't raised no quitter, right? I don't want the live and... Let's see. All right. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Presses. Stop the presses. My guy joined. Me wave at him because I'm excited. I'm ecstatic because I'm about to have an amazing guest on right now. Let me just invite him. And you guys see oh, that I'm in a space, not my own, when I'm standing. When I'm standing, this supposed to be kicking in with Kachi. I'm not, not standing on the corner with Kachi. Even though that would be probably pretty a cool a cool show. Um, I don't know why he left. Let's see if we can get him back on. What's going on? What's going on? Let's see. Are we back on? Are we back on? Let me see if I can invite him on right now. Yes, sir. You got to invite my guy. Let me invite my guy. Let's see if he accepts. He has to accept because he has to come in and tell you guys about his journey. And hopefully you guys are inspired, right, to go on your own amazing journeys as well, right? Let's see if he comes on. Let's see if he comes on. I invited him. Hopefully this Instagram thing works. Let me send the invite again. Uh, I believe I invited you. It says you're unable to join for whatever reason. What's going on? Uh, can you request to join? Is there a request button? All right, cool. If you request, go live with Fidel. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if I can do that. All, All right. right. Like yes, this, I'm bugging. I'm bugging. I didn't know. Like, I'm like, how does this work? Like, I can't even spell. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm like, yo, my computer's bugging. And, like, the phone's bugging. I'm like, shit, how do I make this work? But, yo. Debut. What's going on, my boy? Ah, uh, just good vibes, yo. Today is my first day off. Like I usually, like I force myself to take a couple of days off. Yeah. And I told myself, you know, you saved me, so thank you for having me on. So, uh, hey, yeah, you're, listen, you're I've, been, I've, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been packing and moving all day. I've been, I started packing at one o'clock in the morning. Grant, I was supposed to start yesterday at like eight a.m., but I did it. I went to the gym. So I, w I went to the gym, come back. Go to sleep. Wake up at like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, ah, oh, shoot, I gotta pack. So then I start packing my stuff. Go to a new apartment. I'm mean, nonstop, like moving back and forth since one o'clock in the morning. Like, Jesus. bro, yo, you need muscle. It's my day off. I can still lift some shit. It's like, yo, it's that's what I'm saying. Back. I should have called. I didn't even know it was your day off. I should have <laughs> called you to do the pick things up and put things down vibes. Like I was tired today. 
uh, we can we can exchange you know, I can yeah you know, that's like day off doesn't involve like hey you have to take a completely day off from the gym like you can still right. go rock climbing like today I went to a a block party bro like nice I was like yo you know what let me put on some swim trunks and let me get dunked and I got dunked a couple of times I needed a ice bath no cap right but like hit me up you know like I would have been like yo let's go to this block party take a lunch break and then we go back to boxing shit right. But, so I've never done anything like this before. So like you're gonna have to like teach me or I don't know. What are we gonna do? What are we doing? Hey, it's kick I'm a hey, it's kicking a wakachi. So thank you everybody for coming on to the show, kicking a wakachi, powered by the DC voice, where we highlight an entrepreneur, mogul, visionary, just dope individual of color that's really taking the industry by storm. And today, today, today we have the pleasure, honor, and distinction of sitting down and kicking it with Yo, the down. What up, Lisa? Fidel right, Fit, you, yes sir, you. yes sir. Yo, once I get my whole setup, don't worry. I'm gonna get the soundboard too with the with the explosions know, yeah, and the, the applause and everything. Right. You're the press of moving right. It happens. The adult life is. It's like as we're kids, we look upon it we're like, damn, can't wait to be there. And they're like, but like it's not as cool as it seems, man. It's 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 nice. It's nice being an adult, but it's not as cool as it seems. Like it's not. But hey, don't worry. Yeah, nah, I'm glad, I mean, it was hot today, so I'm glad you got your ice bath. I'm glad you got your ice bath. It was a little warm today. Yeah, it was all right. It was all right. It was all right. It was all right. So, so getting like, straight um, into the interview, right? Okay. I want to know how did you essentially make the transition from you were a soccer player Absolutely. playing at don't don't tell me Castleton Castleton yeah Castleton Spartans right. And then you transition to just fitness, right? What made you say, yo, I'm going to hang up the cleats and pick up the weights? What sort of made you do that? Yeah, I don't know. It was like, I've always been like, growing up as a kid, the first thing I remember was like, just playing soccer. Yeah, it's like the only sport I ever like put my eye on. So my whole life, I'm like, soccer, soccer, soccer. I actually didn't get my first pair of like cleats till I was like, like eight or nine. Wow. And yeah, Lisa, if you're still here, like, she made this happen when I, like, actually was moving to the States when I was a kid. And, like, Lisa, like, she's a mother to me. Like, like that lady, she made me who I am. She's part of who I am. And, like, she's got, she got me on the team. She knew it was, like, my dream to play soccer. She knew it was the only time I could ever be me. And nice. she just understood me, you know what I mean? Like, it's like we just had an understanding. So I got there. And as I got older, I started realizing, and, like, let's fast forward. Boom. College. And, right. And I went to college. And then I was going to school, and then I was, the only reason why I went to college was mainly because all these coaches kept putting ideas in my head, like, yo, like, okay, there's education, but, like, you know, right. we need your skill set. Like, you fit well here. And, like, and then, but they also, like, like hey, there's, there's education, but you fit well here. And, like, I'm like, all right. So I went through the loops and did all the shenanigans. And I was still, like, I was such a, like, a fitness junkie from birth because I know, like, on the days we had a game, I would go to the gym in the morning. Early, like, right, out, yeah. I was that type of player, I, too, yeah. Yeah, and I'll go to, like, the team lifts. I'll go to, like, the gym. I'll do my shenanigans. and I'll still go to practice, go to the games. And then when, like, soccer was over, it was, like, my senior year, I was like, damn, like, I'm playing soccer. I'm 22 years old. I am not a professional soccer player. Like, the gap of being professional in, like, in a big sport like soccer is, like, you – like, by the time you're 15, if you're still playing soccer and you have a dream to go pro, you can still do it, but, like, I'm playing Division Three soccer. Like, it's fun. Right. It's amazing. But I'm like, I need to figure out a way to make myself, like, you know, financially stable, not just for me, but for my family and for everyone around me. You know what I mean? I got to take care of me. I got to take care of my family. Like, yeah, bro, right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a hungry guy. So I'm like, yo, soccer's not it. I got to find the next niche. So I'm like, I hang up the cleats. And I'm just like, bro, I don't know what this fitness world is. I've been watching it on YouTube. I was watching it on Instagram. My Instagram, were, like, we're going crazy. And I was just like, yo, you know what? I am going to do what these guys do. Why am I watching these guys when I can you do You can do it too, right. Yeah, and I was just like, so I started doing it, and I was, like, kind of ashamed of recording myself. Like, all these, like, oh, take pictures in the bathroom. We all do it. And, like, I was uncomfortable doing that. Like, it's like, bro, like, you go in the bathroom, you take a picture. Now I'm to the point where, like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, I would literally <laughs> take my shirt off in the gym and be like, I'm about to take a photo right now. If that bothers you, I'm sorry. Like, like I'm not going to make fun of you if we're, like, trying to max out and you can't max out. So, like, I feel like you want to make fun of me if I take off my shirt just to, like, hit a couple of poses. 
Right. So I'm doing all these things, and everyone's like, yo, you should compete. You should do this. I'm like, I was doing it for, like, healthy and wellness. Now you're right. telling me to turn this into a career? I'm like, I don't know if I got that. And then next thing you know, boom, I'm on stage. First show ever, and I came in second place. Uh, and we want to, I want to talk about that, too. I want to talk about that a little later, right? So, but – as we're talking about your confidence, right? Because I feel like a lot of people, especially like in your position, when we look at you now, it's like, oh, he's fit. He has a great physique. He has all this confidence, you know, award-winning smile, right? Lisa. Lisa guy, right? But then they don't see the the work behind everything, right? So uh, what sort of what... obstacles, what sort of challenges did you have to face and overcome for you to essentially become, you know, Fidel Fit, who you are today? Well, uh, damn, you really want to attack my demons right now? You want to get my head? <laughs> You know, we're kicking it. It's just cool vibes. You know, it's just cool vibes. All right, right, damn. I, I, like, I'm, you know me, gosh. I don't really get that personal, but... Uh, but, all right, well, hey, uh, let me just say this. If you're a powerlifter, you're a bodybuilder, you're mentally unstable. Like, I hate to say it. We all got our demons up here. You're mentally unstable. Like, if you're in this live right now, admit it to yourself. You don't got to tag or comment. Just, we're all crazy. We got our crazy demons. But me, it was more like... I was just, I didn't know how to cope with my emotions. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't really know how to cope with, like, anger. When I was a kid, I was an angry kid. I was angry. Like, I'm a, I was a thrower. Like, when I got mad and there was something like an arm reach away, it's like I would cuss, say whatever comes in my head. I didn't care about people's feelings. I just, like, boom, boom. Like, it was like, and then slowly I learned to, like, adjust and, you know, as right. I got older, I learned how to, like, cope with people. I'm like, yo, people really don't like angry kids, bro. Like, <laughs> it's, you, like angry kids are not reasonable. Like, and I right. like, started noticing. I'm like, I kind of want people to like me, but I'm not going to go looking for people to like me. It's like, I kind of got to be me. I got to find me. Like, like, it's just like, but don't be upset if things don't work out your way. Like, that was me. Like, if like if you got me mad, I'm like, boom, I'm done. Like, it's over. Right. Like, I'm a bomb. And now it's like, I just avoid things that make me feel uncomfortable. And, and like, to me, the gym is like my happy place. And people right. told me I work out without headphones. And I just like, I'm like, yeah, but like some days I work out with headphones. Some days I don't. And people are like, yo, you're crazy. I've never heard that before. Like everywhere I go, people are like, where's the music, man? I'm like, right. I'm to the point where like, I kind of like, this might sound crazy, but it's, I, it's like, I enjoy the pain. It's like there is right. I, but I understand out. what you mean. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, because like, it's sort of like this thing where it's like health and wellness. Right. To me, it's like it's like a battle with myself. It's like right. how far can I lift two fit two? Like, let's say I'm benching. How many reps can I do with two seventy five? Like how many times can I curl forty pound dumbbells? Like right. it's like all right, we're shooting for fifteen. But my goal is if I hit fifteen. I know I got five more. If I got five more, I got two more. If I got two more, I got one more. If I got one more, let's fuck it up, man. Let's do one extra, like, ugh. So, like, it's right. like, it's just like, it's a battle with me and me only. Like, I don't want to know it's music. And you got to pause the music. Then you got to find the right song. Put that shit aside. Focus on you. It's you versus you at the end of the day. And that is what drives me. Success, personal growth. And no one really knows this, but I just want to make everyone around me proud like right. that's my thing like i just want to make people proud like i personally deep down i always thought that like i was a burden on people's lives i was a burden to my family like i still believe i'm a burden to like my family like like there's sometimes if i'm like in a relationship with someone like i want to give them the world like i'm i'm a lover like i want to give to the world so i i want to work really hard to make sure you're given whatever you need and you don't have to worry about that. And my goal right now is to, bro, if I got to break my fingers, if I got to break my mind, I want to give the people around me the world they deserve. And I'm just, and like, to me, it's just like, no, I'm the sacrifice. I am the sacrifice. And I, I've accepted it. And so honestly, man, like, that's, that's kind of what the gym embodies. You know what I'm saying? Because even in the gym, work. like, it's one of those things where, like, you work on yourself as against you versus you, but then you all see that person to the side of the gym, right? who you probably just noticed came to the gym probably a couple of days. They struggle on a curl, but they really getting at that curl. They really pushing that 15 pounder. And you see that guy like, oh, you really like the community building, right? The seeing other people motivated for their own goals pushes you towards your own goals, right? And then also 
motivating other people. As I know that you're in the gym, motivating everybody else, putting a smile like, on everybody's face. Right? Like, so, you're there to better yourself. Like, and if I see that you're trying, I was once there. Like you said at the start, people see me walk in the gym and they're like, bro, that guy is big. I'm like, bro, I was there. Like I was that right. little guy. Like I right. want to get to where I am today. But if I see that you're trying, because when I was that little guy, I was fucking tired. I didn't want to eat, but I knew if I want to get big, I had to eat. If I want to do the things I needed to do to grow my shoulders, I had to do it. And no one was there to be like, hey, you got three more. You got four more. Right. So when I go to, like, the YMCA or if I go to a gym and I see someone that's trying or, like, they'd be like, hey, Phil, spot me. I look at them and I'm like, yo, what do you want to hit? And usually they pick a number. And I'm like, so let's say they they be like, I want to max out. I want to do three. And my thing is, I'm like, oh, you want to do three? Bet. We could do five. And then right. they look at me they're like, bro. I just told you I was maxing out. I want to do three. And I'm like, I'm your spotter. My, the reason I'm having a spotter is for one, safety. And two, right. bro, fucking go till like you need me to grab that bar. Exactly. Like, I'm make me work. I'm not there to look pretty. Like, I want to grab that bar. Like, I want you to go to your max. Like, you want to finish here. I want you to finish here. So, like, and I want everyone to feel that. Like, and developing yeah, that fitness. mindset, right? Like, because I feel like there's a difference between general fitness and bodybuilding, right? Bodybuilding as a career, bodybuilding as a competition, as a sport. So what made you say, yo, honestly, like, you love the gym, you love working out, but it's like, yo, I want to bodybuild. I want to get into the physique competitions, get into the poses. I'm going to talk about your competitions, too, yeah. but what made you say, yo, I want to get uh, swollen, essentially, as they, as they said? Bro, like, it was the next it was it was the next tier. It was the next tier. Like I plateaued. I was like at this right. point, like I have like personally, I'm not trying to chew my horn. Like I was gifted with amazing genetics. Like mm -hmm. so I'm like, all right, everyone keeps telling me I'm this, I'm this, and I don't see it, but like, you know what? Let me step on stage. If the judges and the people that are watching me pose believe that like I have the physique to continue in this in this career, I will continue. So I stepped on stage. And I prepared for it. And then I, the only reason why I lost to this day, like I'm still mad I lost. And it's not an excuse that I lost. But the only reason why I lost is because I did not prepare carefully. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to bodybuilding and stepping on stage, no matter how big you are, if you cannot show that you are muscular and your physique is obviously better than the guy to the right or the left, you're going to lose. And the guy to the right of me, one because he just knew how to move nice. It was like it was like Bruce Lee, be water. Uh -huh, you know? Yeah, he yeah. Just knew how to move nice. And then I came in like, bro, first show ever. I was just like, e and I was just like, e and then everyone just knew I was nervous. The judges knew I was nervous, and then like they were just like, yo, you're a good guy. You got you great physique. Like you came in better than this guy, but like this guy came better prepared. Right, and he deserved exactly. it. He 100 percent deserves it. That it was Jeremy, his name deserves it. 100 centers or Jeremy was like, bro, that man was a monster. But it was now I want to go back and it's in two months. I'm still preparing for the same competition, but this year I'm going to do a different like section. And right. yeah, so I'm going to walk on stage. I'm going to have like a speedo and I'm going to be like Arnold, you know, and I'm going to nice. be like some coolest to win. And honestly, a lot of people just don't know that they see bodybuilders and they just see the poses. They see these big monkey guys, <laughs> these huge women, right? And they're like, one, how the hell is this a competition? And two, if they're competing, how the hell do they, they, they prepare for this? You know, if I'm a basketball player, I got drills. I'm a soccer player, I got drills. But yeah. as a bodybuilder, what are your drills? Like, how do you prepare for a bodybuilding competition? And how did you prepare for your first one? Like, you didn't even know about the world, know about the industry, and you just went on stage. So how did you, what was your emotions? What was your expertise? Lack of expertise, planning, lack of planning, going into, like, that end zero, recent tournament. Zero, zero, zero. No, wow. No, no, nothing. Like, I'm telling you, like, it came into my head, and when I make a decision, if you know me, decision made, there's no going back. Like, <laughs> I, ever since I was a kid, the moment the decision, no matter how good or bad it is, you have about five seconds to convince me it's bad. If no one's there to convince me it's bad, decision's made. Like, we're going forward. So I woke up one day, and I signed up. And it was because of this guy at the gym. I was flexing and stuff. And he came up to me and he said, bro, you're nice and all. You're big. But I look better. And I looked at him oh. and I'm like, you're competing in two months, yeah? And he looked at me and he goes, yeah. And I woke up to, like at 2 a.m., registered for the same competition he was doing. 
And I was like, this fucking guy, man. You got me. <laughs> I Like at 2 a.m., woke up in this room. And literally, what am I allowed to blah, blah, blah. Register for it. And when it comes to preparing for a show, it's the meals. It's the meals. And, like, it's just, it's, it's, like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, cons- like, uh, it's, like, repetition. You right. just got to stay on point. You know what I mean? It's, like, you go to the gym, you eat your meal, you eat your meal. But the thing is, you can, working out is, like, I like to say, like, 30% of the work. Right, right. The meal prepping, like, counting your calories. If you like to count calories, counting calories. I personally sometimes don't. It's, like, you just got to count your calories. If you're preparing for a show, definitely count calories. Count right. your calories. And when I say, like, I had no idea what I was going into, I was wow. fucking finessing everything. I'm, like, sweet potatoes, steak, chicken. Like, I was just, like, finessing everything. Right. I had no coach, no nothing. It was all me. And the fact is I'm going to continue by myself till I reach that point where I'm, like, I kind of need assistance. Like, I mm-hmm. need someone that's been in the industry and understands – what separates you from the average to the pros. And once right. I reach that middle point and I think I'm not there yet, I don't know, maybe I'm not there yet, but like I personally think I'm not there. But once I'm there and I get a coach, y'all would know. Like I'm like, bro, I, my goal is to have lats so big. Like, you know, how I have, like, gym? <laughs> my goal is to have lats so big. I literally like, I can't pull my arms down. Like it just You're like, like looking like this, look like this guy in the gym. Exactly. Look- like, I just want to go crazy. Yo, and by the way, thank you to all the supporters out here. Like, everyone just keeps shining. <laughs> but, yeah, it was today. But, yeah, it's just, like, no coach, no nothing, just me. And as much as, like you just said, it goes into my next question, right? Like, as much as you like being in the gym, you post many shirtless photos. You also post a lot of food photos as well that people probably don't even realize that you're, like, an amazing cook. You're really into food. You're a really big foodie. So what made you, like, what sort of – education i want to ask did you have to come across for you like you said finessing at first but then acclimating yourself with the fitness you know nutritional value of a bodybuilder uh what got me to cooking was at an early age like it's actually started with a great guy i met when i was a kid he owned like he was he worked in the industry the restaurant industry and he was like if he was like he was a mentor to me you know what I mean? and he was like high class chef like this man he did it all. Like, when I say did it all, did it all. And when he did it, it was precise, and it nice. came out delicious. So, like, I looked up to him, and every time he was cooking, his name was Michael. And every time Michael was cooking and I was in the house, I always went into the kitchen. I went out first, I was watching him. Then he started, like, asking me to come join him and assist with little things. And so I assisted him with little things. And after that, he, like, I'll go home. And then, like, the thing is, I was raising, like, I'm, like, my mom is an American. She's become an Americanized because of my three younger siblings. No, mm-hmm. two younger. No, three younger siblings. But like when I was like ten, if I didn't want to eat what she made, oh yeah, you wasn't eating. Said, go, go cook. The, right, yeah, the right. kitchen's right there. It's open twenty four exactly. seven. You don't like this? The kitchen's right there. Go cook. Right. So I was like, all right, all right, fair. So I like, I then I like Michael was in the back of my head when I was just like, I came back from soccer practice. It's late nights. No one's here. All right, like, I'm also going to cook. And then sometimes I didn't want to eat what they ate. I went and cooked. And, bro, my steaks were dry. The chicken was dry. I didn't know how to cook shit. And then I just fell in love with food after that. And then I joined a – it's a Iron Junior Chefs. So, like, fast forward, I'm, like, 15 Iron Junior Chefs. It's a cooking right. competition. So I get into wow. it with my team. Iron Chef uh, VT. Yeah, it's here in Vermont. Wow, so, yeah. So I joined that. I did Iron Junior Chefs, and my team came in second place. And I was just yeah, after that. in second place. You're always That's, in second place. Life just keeps hitting me with the number two, bro. Like, I'm <laughs> number one. I need number one, bro. Life just hits me with number twos all the time. So we can we get in second place. And then, I, like, I just continue with just understanding the, the world of just, like, being in the kitchen and, like, what actually means to eat. Like, all of us were taught, like, at an early age, like, yo, the, the pyramid, like, the meal pyramid. What do you call it? Right. Uh, you know what I mean? The pyramid, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the full so pyramid like, with the the candies on the yeah. top and the so like, wheat on the bottom. Like, yeah, was like I'm like all right, and then I just was like that's bullshit, bro. All this is bullshit, like bro. Like I don't need this. I don't need this. I can make right. my own version of that, like. But just so I'm like, oh, my whole life I was always been eating whole foods. Like my main dish was rice and beans and right. either goat meat, chicken or steak. You know what I mean? It was always like whole foods. 
So my body kind of acclimated at an early age, and now it's like if I go and eat like fast food, it would like bro, I'm I'm sleeping. Like it's gonna like, right. pull me in a coma. I'm out. So I just started cooking, and then the food part of being obsessed with it and meal prepping was just the fact that like if you want to stand out and you want to grow, it's one meal prepping just saves you time. Two, you have consistent meals like just ready to eat, like it's there. Boom, like. You go to gym, you go come home, pull, microwave, there, boom. You go uh, to work, yeah. microwave, it's there. Like, it's just, it's, bro, it's so much, it's time-saving. It's like, it's the hack, bro. If you literally, like, finesse it and practice meal prepping, like, you meal prep, like, two plates, three plates, four plates, and eventually it becomes, like, a, a week of meal prep. Right. Bro, it's just, like, it was just, like, it's second nature to me at this point. Like, I just meal prep, and it's, like, the easiest thing in the world. So when you, like, train other people, as you have, like, all the discipline, consistency, amazing physique, right? Do you push the people that you train harder because you know where that little guy can end up as you've been that little guy? Or do you sort of give them a little bit more slack because they're that little guy? Or a little girl, or a little woman, whatever you know, yeah. whatever they, whoever they are. Some people personally don't like me or don't want to train. They, don't, they like me, but they don't want to train with me. Right. Because of what you said. Like... I have a mentality where, like, if I can do it, you can, you do, can do it too. Exactly. Like, no, no, you can't do it. You can do better. Like, right. You can do better. You can do more. If I if I can do that, you can do better. So my thing, if you're training with me, Chuck, right there, Chuck that's just joined. He knows, like, me and Chuck when we train, it's like it's you versus me. It's no longer yeah. me versus me. Like it's you and me. If I put on like X Y and it's my max, I'm gonna do that. And you are to tell me to keep going to like you can see my face that I'm like I'm dying, you know. And then once you go, you take off my plates, put on your plates or X, Y or whatever you need, and you push it. And my goal is to make sure that you get enough out you're of pushing, it. Pushing, you're like, pushing, it's, right? You're just pushing. Like I want you to just, just go, go. And when I'm coaching people online, and they're like, "Yo, Fidel, like I'm slacking the meals," I'm like, "Yo, yo, yo, to do me a favor, like go to the store." buy like one simple protein one like one carb go home meal prep that just meal prep two meals i don't want you to meal prep a whole week i don't want you to just disregard everything i told you that month and just take a time off and just like meal prep two meals for that day if you right. don't meal start prep, small just disappear just yeah just just know like the plan is still there it's on the it's on the refrigerator just step away from it and just like understand like for example a couple of weeks ago I literally had a mental breakdown low key. I was like, bro, why am I still like, do I really want to do bodybuilding? Like, right. is this something I'm going to like do forever? Like I literally was questioning my plans mm -hmm. and like, and like, if that doesn't happen to you in life and like, you don't question your, your motives. If that doesn't like the, the clock, you know, wakes you up a little bit. Like you need those like moments where you're like, why am I doing this? Like, recenter what, your why essentially yeah just fall back and be like what is the end goal like right you know, just wake up you know so that that's what i tell them i'm like yo if that's stressing you out just step back a little bit like just exactly look back into it and be like all right i'm doing this because this is where we started this is where we are now and it's clearly here and then this is the end goal so like just yeah just take it one step at a time like just don't ever rush into anything once you rush into something it's like you're literally gonna quit you know what I mean? Just take it one step at a time. And, you know, yeah. looking forward now as you, like, looking forward at the bigger picture. I feel like a lot of people when they get into the gym, they don't see the bigger picture. You see the weight in front of them, and that's they get stopped. But looking at the bigger picture, right, what can we expect from you in the future? I know you do have your physique competition that's coming up this yeah. year, right? That's coming up. So is there anything else that we're supposed to be, that we're looking for, looking towards or how can we even see this physique competition? Like what's the details around that? YouTube. So I've been right. lacking on YouTube. I have one video out. And so like, I know, like, like I told you, I like, for example, there was this cool I saw somewhere. So basically let me start here. YouTube. So I have a YouTube. It's on my, it's on my bio. So click that subscribe, like put like an alarm, whatever you need to do. Stay tapped in. I put my meal preps in there. I put my video logs in there. I have a video I'm editing right now, and I'm making the the intro for it right now. I'm gonna like upload it hopefully by next weekend, and you guys nice. will be able to see all that. But I'm gonna take 
YouTube by storm. That's my next main project. Like my goal now is to get the Snapchatters to Instagram, Instagram to YouTube, and it's literally right. like you know what I mean. So nice it's, pipeline, it's, right? And that is hard. Like just to get one group of people from like one platform to join this platform from this one, like just to hop. It's like, bro, you got to be a magician with it, you know. But right. YouTube, and but like it's what was I gonna say? Uh, what was what else was I gonna say before I jumped? How to how to watch your uh, competition? Oh yeah, with the yeah. details around the competition. But yeah, that's, you just gotta stay tuned. On obviously, I post a lot more on Instagram, and it's always on my stories. Like I'm like daily logging everything. Right. That's, like people, some people are like, "Yo, you be posting too much." I'm like, "Bro, if it's not for you, it's not for you." Exactly. You know, what I mean? if it's for you, it's for you. If you don't like what I post, it's not for you. You don't mm -hmm. have to view it. You can mute my stories, but like. If you truly don't like what I'm doing, unfollow me. It's really not right. gonna hurt my feelings. Like I'm in this to like educate people and show people the background of what it actually takes to do this. And like you don't have to look like me to go to the gym. You like if you come and hit me, I'll be like, yo, Fidel, I need your help and I make you a meal plan or a workout plan. You're not like there was this one lady, she came in and she was like, Yo, I don't wanna have big shoulders like you. But right. Like, I want like you to help me. I'm like People train for four years to get shoulders that big. And you think you're just going to get them with just, like, a couple of pushes in a week? Like, I looked at them like, it doesn't work like that. Exactly. You know, just go to the gym and, oh, bang, bang, bang. And you're just, move, just out of nowhere. Thing. Like, and plus, females, muscular, like, jack girls are pretty, like, women or females are pretty hot. Like, like do you. You want to be jack? Right. Jacked, Shout out to the girl. women bodybuilders. Like, yeah. Yo, like it's it's kind of like, like I'm like, yo, you take care of yourself. That's an attraction, like, right. yo. But hey, some people don't want to get that big. Like, if I make you a workout plan, the workout plan doesn't equal out what the outcome. You know what I mean? You're not just gonna get big overnight or in a month. Like, you, the training is not there. <laughs> I don't know. Well, how you will be it. fit, and that's what people don't understand. Like, there's a difference between bodybuilding, as I was saying earlier. And general fitness. Like, people, I think Johnny want to be fit, but it takes like a pretty simple, like special like person. Ripped, bro. This guy is big body, bro. This guy, I'm not sure he's ripped. Oh, I mean, man, stop, 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 man. Stop, 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 stop. Yo, right away, he forgot to tell you guys, he's a, he be hitting the gym pretty hard himself. <laughs> I have to. I have. I told you, I've been moving all day. You think I was moving all these boxes <laughs> with scrawny arms and all? I had to go to the gym for that. That's uh, fair. So and, uh, like, it's just it's a different world, man. Like right. lifestyle and like health and wellness and just pushing your body to the max. Right. Like the shit you do here is not comparable to what you do here. And what you do here would never mix what you do there. It's just like two different worlds, man. And so like if you hit me up, you're like, hey, Phil, like this is what I do for work. This is my goals. I just do this for like health and wellness and I want to look good all year round. I will make you a plan. Yeah. It might yeah. be similar to, like, the bodybuilding to, like, this guy that wants to be jacked as fuck. But your meal plan is totally different. Like, you can do all that heavy lifting, but if you're not eating the way this guy's eating, you're not going to get big. Right. Like, if you're supposed to be healthy and wellness, your meal plan, like, it's like your calories. Like, it depends on how much calories you put into your body. If you put in, like, a large amount of calories into your body, that's like you're trying to grow. If you just maintain at an average, like, calorie surplus – or I mean, a calorie intake, like whatever you're maintaining, your main your maintenance is. If you stay there, you're just gonna get a little shredded, and you're gonna lose the leftover fatness. You know what I mean? But if you're that bodybuilder and you want to get ripped, you go on a calorie surplus. Well, you're just gonna it's get skyrocket. It's different. It's a. It's just I don't know. Some people just think, oh, if it does making this plan, I'm gonna look like him. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. You don't eat what I eat. Like. Right. Like protein shakes alone have 1,250 calories. That's more, that's more That's more. calories than like most of my friends eat in a day, which is horrible. Right. So, like, it's just like I eat 5,000 calories a day. You're not going to look like me. But if, if I was to give you my, like, Tash, if I was to give you my workout plan and you do it, like, you don't eat how I eat. So, you're not going to, like, you're just going right. to get ripped. You're gonna probably go in a calorie deficit, right? You're burning so much, you know. But if you're eating like me and you're doing what I'm doing, it's like, bro, you're gonna get like, you know what I mean? 
So but that's the beauty be about the gym. The, sub, the, the, the personality of it, the subjectivity of it, right, is so unique to every person where fitness looks so different amongst you. might see someone that you may think is like, you know, kind of heavy set, little big bone, but they push in 400 pounds on the bench press. You see a girl that looks a little small, probably about 5'4", but... I didn't hear a single thing. You just froze right there. You're like, whoa, whoa. Oh, I was saying... I was saying, like, literally, fit, fitness is beautiful because it's subjective, because of the fact that, you know, the, the girl that's 5'4", that you think can't really push nothing, is doing 500, 500 pounds on the squat, and the dude that's a little heavy set that you think may be eating a little too many cheeseburgers is probably hitting 100-pound dumbbells on a chest press. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the exactly. subjectivity of it is so nice. And before we get to the end of the interview, you know, I always have to do a lightning round so I can get to know you a little better. You know, so pick the brain round. a little bit. You know, lightning round. All yes. Right. So, and you're you're a fitness guy, right? And I would love all the people that watch this video nah. later, interview later. They have to get some tips. They have to get something that's gonna jump start into the gym. So, what are your top five favorite exercises to do in the gym? Top five. Let's see. Oh. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna be basic as fuck. All right. Best. Tricep, no chest, biceps, and shoulders. Okay. Chest, biceps, shoulders. Oh, wait, you said five. I mean exercises, but you said muscle groups. Oh, 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 right. oh, exercise bench, my bad bench. Uh, shoulder presses, military shoulder okay. presses. Okay. Like um, ooh, curls. Oh yeah. Uh, barbell or dumbbell though? Yeah, dumbbell curl kickbacks for your tricep. Yeah. And. What's called uh, flies, flies for the shoulders. Really? You okay. Hit, you gotta hit not just the front though. You got, I mean, uh, you gotta hit the side, the rear. You know. Right, right, yeah, right. Was, yeah, and, right, uh, right, right. What's another one. Oh, back. Oh, back. Oh yeah, back is rows, back is like my favorite to hit in the day. Uh, yeah. Rows, overhead pull, right. Rows, row, pull down, like all that shit, bro. I like a so, back workout. I love a good pump on my bicep. I love a good chest pump. A go shoulder pump. That's all I need. It's all in this general, general yeah, tension like, area like, here. It's like right here. It just elite leg day. We all want to like. Right, right, right. Leg day. I'm crying, but I'm doing it. A little you chest you day. Don't I'm legs, happy. You don't hit legs. You don't grow, guys. By the way, right. to grow your your whole entire body, right? You, if you don't hit legs, you won't grow. Okay. The bigger muscles release the most amount of like. Uh, testosterone and everything, you know what I mean? Like, if you hit those pretty hard, your body kind of, like, is, like, it's like an awakening, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, we got more in the tank. Like, whoa. Right. See? So, oh, yeah, Mr. Right. Iron Chef, you know, Mr. Foodie, I need to know, what's your favorite dish to make so that I can share it to the people down so they can make it in their own kitchens and homes? Oh, you guys are trying to steal my food games? I'm trying to steal everything. I, you know, it's very expensive to, to train with you, so I'm trying to get some freebies here. <laughs> good eats. You need the good eats. All right, I'll give you some of the good eats. All right, my favorite, I say, bro, I got the grill. I got a grill. Bro, grill, get yourself a grill. If you don't have a grill, bake. If you can't bake, put it in a pan. Don't fry anything, but grill, bro, I got a grill, so I like grilling steak, chicken, Thighs. I hate chicken breast, bro. It's one, they're so hard to put down. Two, right. there's no flavor. So chicken thighs, go chicken thighs, steak, and sweet potatoes and rice. So nice. those are my go to. Like a regular gym rat, chicken and rice. Chicken and rice. Chicken and rice <laughs> and steak and rice. All right. So aside from the food that makes you look good, I need to know, because I know you have one. What's your favorite cheat day snack? Well, I'm not trying to cap or that. Like, man, I'm not even capping. I don't, I don't have. Oh, yeah, I'm capping. Cheeseburger, <laughs> cheeseburger, <laughs> cheeseburger and fries. Like, I literally take the fries, put it on the cheeseburger, boom. Right. Cheeseburger and fries. Like, bro, right, you can't so go wrong with that. I need to know. I need to know. Right when you at home and you chilling, you done did your bubble bath. Right after the gym. Right. <laughs> What's your bath. top three favorite shows to binge watch? Wow, that's hard. Um, that's hard. Take your time. Um, I go with uh, I just finished uh, what the, what did I just finish? Oh man, uh, 
Oh, there's a. What the heck? I don't even know what my like. <laughs> bro, what the? Bro, let me go on Netflix real quick. Right I swear I know what I watch. I swear I know what I'm watching. Uh, where is this Netflix thing, bro? So right now I'm watching that Laker documentary. It's like the Lakers on HBO. Oh, the like, one with uh, Magic and, and Larry yeah. Bird. Yeah, what yeah, is that yeah. one called? I don't even know what it's called. I know what you're talking about, though. But yeah, that, the Laker thing. And then on Netflix, yo, this might be cheesy, but my sister put me onto this. It's like the originals. I just finished ah. it. It's the vampire. <laughs> like, yeah, Did you watch I, Vampire Diaries before that? No, no, no. Like, you got to watch Vampire Diaries. Diaries. You got to watch Vampire Diaries, bro. Vampire Diaries? All right. I want, you, so you, you, you know about it. All right. And then I'm, I'm, I'm dibbled and dabbled in the vampiric arts. I, I've been there. What well, if you pick vampire or wolf? I mean, I'm I'm more of a vampire guy. I'm not gonna lie. This guy, yo, this right. Guy. I know, I know. Dude, I, I'm also moving the in the night. Like, night. This goes my night. secret. Oh, speaking of moving in the night, yo, pull up to the crib. We gotta hit the barbecue. By the way, he's coming over and we're barbecuing. Oh yeah, yo. I definitely got yeah. If you barbecue pull and up. steak and I'm chicken, I gotta pull you. up. I'm gonna send you the Venmo. Pick up the steak. Yeah. Got actually, you. I got, I got salmon. What, actually, no, do I have salmon? I'll text you. I'll text you later. But you got plenty right. Chris. But yeah, All right, that's so why end I, up please. the interview. Right, I need to know what are your three lessons that you learned on your journey thus far? Three lessons. That you can share to another young skinny kid with skinny legs that wants to be a bodybuilder one day. What sort of lessons can you impart on that kid and essentially help everyone else on their own journeys and their own industries? What, like in life we have to find a need and we all are looking for that need like what what like what's there what's ours to conquer not just to conquer what's there for us to build on top of you know what i mean if not build on top of what's what's already there that we can add on to and once you find that or if you believe you found it already like all you have to believe is like it's gonna be like all you have to believe that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make it like, you've been, like, I don't know how old you are. Most of my the viewers are, like, probably 21, 22, 24, maybe 30. I don't know what, what age, age gap you guys are in. But the point is, you've been through so much in your lifetime. Like, you're, like, there was a one point, like, five years ago, like, where you're probably, like, damn, that was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. You survived that. You survived this. You survived this. Now we're here. You survived all this. And now you tell me that you can't survive this one moment of, like, just hitting the, the wall and moving to the next level and you just have to believe in you no matter what and once you believe in you and you find out what's you truly yours it will get lonely it will get dark and it will get sad and guess what it's cheesy again to say there's a light at the end of that rainbow i mean at the end of that tunnel does like just look at the light and be like i know where i'm going it's gonna be lonely it's gonna be sad like when i started this journey bro i literally wanted a dark place i was mentally just like i'm not going out i don't want to hang out with my friends like all my friends understood and i was like gym home food work gym home food work i had no life it was just like it was my like literally tunnel vision that is what's gonna happen the moment you hit tunnel vision you're gonna be like in a place where you're like wow i don't hang out with my friends like why don't my friends hang out with me what's going on with me you're growing and to grow, yeah. you will, it will be lonely for a while. It will get lonely. And trust me, you, like, that's what happens. You just got to keep going. And you keep going. And once, once your friends start noticing that you're hitting that, like, wow, succession is coming his way or her way. Like, once your friends start noticing that, they either join you or they're, pla like, bro, they're clapping for you. They're like, bro, this, this guy's doing different shit. He's on a different wavelength. He's moving different succession is coming for them and like now they start building like a support network around you they went from like the people you hang out with talk about other people to like yo Fidel how can like how can I do this in the gym how can I better this in the kitchen like right now like we like you literally start meeting so many people Kosh I met her a couple months ago now we're having a, a like a little like live like see like it's like you start building a network around your people that like enjoy what you do and eventually you start building a community around your niche and it's like, it's the best thing ever. Now you have a whole world of like joyness. And bro, like I talk about the gym everywhere I go. Like, 
Like, it's crazy. Sometimes, like, if my, my wife is going to get annoyed. Like, I sometimes I get annoyed, but my wife is going to get annoyed. Like, everywhere I go, people are like, yo, you work out, and next thing you know, we're talking about meal plans. We're talking about what we're doing. <laughs> gym. It's literally, like, my life now. Like, And I don't mind it. Some people think, oh, this guy doesn't want to talk about the gym. Yes, there's days I don't want to talk about the gym. But, yeah, that's literally just keep hoping for the best and keep moving forward. Like, don't think your friends are going to hate you. If your friends hate you because you've chosen yourself over them, for like, just because you, you've seen something that they don't see, the point is don't wait for your friends to accept your new goals. Don't wait for your family members to accept your new goals. Write them down. Lock them in. I don't know what you do. I don't know what your plan of action is. Figure it out. Do it. If you believe that you can do it, do it. If you see what I'm saying? If you if you fail, at least you fail trying. Like, right. People that own businesses, they have failed many, many, many times before reaching it. Mark Zuckerberg. Bro, that man failed so many times before he reached that. Like I, you name it. Like um Tesla. That man's rockets blown up so many times. Right. Like Bro, it's like, it's just, you you will fail. It's part of success. Failing is part of success. When you fail, you don't fail where you started. Am I, like, am I capping? Right. When you, when you, you start fail at a different you, point, right. You fail at a different point, and you try again, you fail at a different point. Exactly. Like, that's what people don't understand. You When you fail at something, it's never where you started. Never. Bro, never. When I fail my max, when I max it out of the gym, and I put 315, bro, when I first started, and I was failing at, like, 220, Bro, right. I didn't start at 220. Now I'm fucking repping out 220 with my arm, like, with one hand, like this. Point is, you where you where you fail is not where you're going to where you started. So just lock into your goals and just go. Don't look at a rearview mirror. Why are you looking at a rearview mirror? Don't look at a rearview mirror. Like, bro, you have a windshield this big, and you're going to look at a mirror this small. Wow. Right. right. Like, why? Right. That's my and thing. And honestly, like, mirror. What a better way to sign out the interview. What a better way to inspire the people. What a better way to really get individuals really motivated by whatever goals that they have. And honestly, Fidel, thank you for coming on this live, on this interview, doing this interview with me. You know you're my boy, and I definitely wanted to show the world how cool my boy was and how cool my boy is and how cool he's going to be. So thank you for coming on, and thank everyone for getting on the viewership. Right, you guys can watch this interview on the DC Voice. Make sure you guys follow Fidel. Make sure you guys follow the DC Voice to watch Bro. this interview, past Keep interviews, and future interviews. Yo, let's make it happen. How wait, wait, hold on. How can I post this on mine? <laughs> I don't know how this YouTube, I mean this IG live thing works. I don't even know. I got it's gonna be on YouTube as well. So I'm gonna send the YouTube link so you can uh share to your people. So they can rewatch this later on, yeah. Of course, of course. Black boys magic. You know, you know the vibes. That's a big fact. I'm sick and tired of being down bad, bro. We we going up. Like right. I said, rear view mirror is this small. Your windshield, windshield is this big. this big. Why are you looking at the rear view mirror? Right. And just like that, guys, I'm going to see y'all next week. Cheers, bro. Cheers. <laughs>